So I've done my vascular, I've done my neurological. I am looking at the axis of the ankle. I don't know if you could see hers is higher than, than the other doctor, okay? So she has more of a tilt. I'm now putting her, I'm, I'm putting the talus in a uh, um, congruent position. I'm putting ground reactive force weight here and I'm taking her foot and I'm putting it, I'm moving it uh, into eversion, explaining to her that this is the position of her axis and I'm gonna push in the other direction and she's either gonna stay here uh, and be rigid, go to vertical and be stable or go all the way and be flexible. And I don't know if you can see it, but she's pretty flexible, okay? She can go, the other doctor stopped right about over here she's not going to just vertical, she's going beyond vertical, okay? So she has a flexible rear foot. I then put her back in the same position. I lower the first met and I push in the other direction. She's either gonna stay here and, and be rigid, go online and be stable or go up and be flexible. And I don't know if you can see it, but she's more flexible than he was. So follow what I'm saying. You could spend an entire life focusing on the rigid, I could be a foot specialist of the rigid, flexible foot type, okay? Root has made us a specialist of the flexible, flexible foot type, and it's not a very common foot type. So most of the time we're diagnosing our patients incorrectly. We're treating the rear foot with frontal plane correction when their problem is in the forefoot. But in this case, okay, let's do the other test. I lift up, and again, lots of motion here. So automatically, I, if I'm a practitioner of foot, foot typing, I get to learn these, these foot types. I get to learn these people. I get to learn the bell curve. I pass through that slide, but there's a bell curve of each foot type. Okay, so now I'm pushing up as hard as I can, and now you tell me, difference? Quite a bit of difference, more so than the other doctor. In this case, I'm looking here like what, see, now I know what you're saying. Instead of doing that, I do this and look where my two fingers are. And this one's lower than this one. Okay, so that's me doing that frontal plane examination. So I do this. You see my fingers? The one is lower than the other. Okay? So wait, now we're gonna invert on this side and watch this. She could almost clap with this foot. Okay? So there's a, there's a big limb length. You have low back pain? From time to time, yeah. Yeah, and, and one-sided knee pain, ever? Right side. Yeah, long side, it's always the long side. In other words, this gives you an, an understanding of what's, I can predict, I just predicted two problems. She says, this person knows what he's talking about. I could, I could pick up her shoes, I didn't do it with Howard, and we can see that she's, she's highly contacting on the outside and she's not using her big toe joint because it's lifting up off the ground. We can predict it by her by her, if this is off the ground, then it's not gonna be putting much weight into her shoe, okay? She has a little bit of a lesion under the first met, uh, second met, which is consistent, and in her case, long, short, in other words, this is almost as important to treat as, as the foot type. She has a bunion on one side and almost none on the other, okay? When, when she's in front of me, I, I know what this foot type is before I even explain it to her, okay? Let's, uh, do you have any other complaints with your feet? No, but my feet are fine. Okay, so let's walk regular up and back. Her rear foot is collapsed and her forefoot, they're both pretty wide. They're both pretty wide. Let's just come up and back. Not as much compensation of her toes. Okay, and we're just looking but Again, yeah, shoulder position is, is reflecting the long short. And now let's take a big stride, fast, yeah. So she doesn't like doing this too much. Is it comfortable? No. Not very comfortable, okay. And let's stop here. So I'm just gonna lift up a little more. Her knee is really internal, much more than Howard's, okay. Her ankle is way inside coming this way, it should be going this way. She, she has a functional hallux extensus. She can't even, she can't even take the, the big toe joint. This is her moving at the IP joint. She can't even take this joint off the ground. And I'm pushing, I'm pushing hard enough to push her backwards and there's very little function here. And the same thing here. 
So she's getting IP join function. She's using this rocker instead of this rocker, which is the next pathological state to, um, to this. So now I'm still treating her plantar fasciitis. I'm still I'm putting the strapping, giving the injection, taking the x-ray. It's not changing anything else that I'm doing. I'm just adding a biomechanical diagnosis so that I could enter biomechanical treatment. So again, we want the short pad here. We want to keep her from, from pronating. So we're putting a pad over here. It's actually the same, the same pads. So which we believe that it's we believe that it's this one, and I have to say, what, you know, in other words, there's times when I do this kind of evaluation in front of people, and it turns out that my prediction, so to speak, is not always correct, because there's some other kind of compensation going on. So let's do another thing. So I didn't want to overload you. Take this one bone and push down on my, on my, this one bone, the first metatarsal, and push down strongly. Okay, I don't know if you follow what I'm saying, but she's using, do it. She's using tendo Achilles, and she's really not using perineus. Okay, let's do it on this side. So she's dropping her whole foot. That means she has to next do this when she's on the ground. Okay, and now take your foot and do this. No, not downward, just this. Yes, now she's using perineus. If she were pushing this hard against the ground, she would be holding her weight. She would be having an arch. So if I could hold the foot in an optimal position long enough for that to happen and train perineus to work, tendo Achilles is not working here now, so she wouldn't be overusing it. It would be lengthened, not stretched, but lengthened, relaxed. The sarcomeres would be getting longer, okay, in a, in a natural way. Um, and so this opens up the door for muscle training once I get her into position. I don't know if you can see, but her kneecap is, especially on this side, is much straighter. It was kind of almost, almost into here. Her ankle is facing more forward. This is now coming off the ground and her first ray rocker is working. It, it hasn't worked in years. Okay, look, look at this function here. So, when I do this in front of a patient, they are making a decision at that point, as far as I'm concerned, of whether or not they could afford my care, not whether or not they need it. And that's a major change in the decision-making process. Because I could say, listen, I think you need this so badly that, that I'm going to give it to you for nothing. And at that point, it would be a no-brainer, so to speak. So now let's walk regular again. Her shoulders are much more even. How does it feel? Kind of comfortable? Yeah. And now let's take that, that big long one, the one you hated. <laughs> T talk to us. Same, better, worse? No, same, better than the first time. Let's do it again. There's more spring in her step now. She's capable. So now I can tell her to open up her cadence, her velocity, her step length. Okay? You'll see at our exhibit that our pads are packed in a kit and they're labeled $25. And I, that's why I say to the patient, can I have your permission to put these pads in your shoes? Um, it's a dress shoe, so these are made out of felt. So I can, and it's made for a man's 12, so I can cut it into size. And I could, if she had a gym shoe, I would use the whole lift. But in this case, I don't want to take her out of the shoe. And so I'm going to put these in here, and I'll shorten these to size as well. And I'm putting them in the same exact way that I put them on her feet. If the patient won't pay the $25, then they'll never purchase an orthotic. So it immediately eliminates those people who are, uh, if they want to come back and say, I'd like to try the pads, then that would be fine. But if not, they're never going to take the orthotic. They're the wrong person. You're wasting your time. It's not going to, you haven't educated them well enough. Or for whatever reason, they're not attached to it. And I have to say, there's a learning curve, but it's not rocket science. And again, I'm putting this kind of closer to the vault of the foot, to the center of her arch or her vault, than, than to the MLA 
we, we've lived at the MLA way too long. The real question is, what do I do with my other shoes? Oh, those shoes. So at that point, I tell them to bring in more shoes, and it's $25 a pair. If the shoe has a removable insole, which this doesn't, I tell them to put it in other shoes and try it in as much as you can for this week while we're waiting to see if my treatment helps your plantar fascia or anything else that we're dealing with. Um, so follow what I'm saying. She's giving us an experiential reaction to what I just did. She's, she's part of it. She's making a decision. Um, and, and if we don't give the patient that kind of opportunity, then I, we're never going to, I don't know what, we're never really going to help them. We're never really going to cure people. So this is, this is yours now. Mm -hmm.